everyone, my name is Nora Matthew. I own a fitness studio in Latham, New York. It's called Her Strength. Um, we cater to mostly the female population. Um, we work with everyone from, um, you know, women who are trying to conceive up through post menopause. Um, so all age ranges. We work mainly with um, functional exercise. So that means just things that you would do in your everyday life are made easier by the things that we do in the studio. Um, we really promote strength training for women, strong bones, and we have specialty programs for pregnancy, which is called our PregnaFit program. And we have a postpartum early rehabilitation program that works you back into exercise. And then our normal classes are um, both lift and condition. So they're all different facets of strength training for everyone who wants to come in. Hi everybody, my name is Erin Napoleon and I am a doctor of physical therapy with Choice Physical Therapy in Troy. And I'm happy to be down at Her Strength Studio in Latham, New York with Nora Matthew. Today we just wanted to go over a couple of um, different diagnoses that we commonly see as physical therapists when we're helping people who are going throughout the pregnancy process, to, well, whether it's first, second, or third trimester. Um, typically about 50% of people who are pregnant will experience some form of back pain throughout their entire pregnancy. So we're going to focus primarily on the different causes of back pain. Our normal anatomy presents itself to where sometimes these different types of pain can come on because of the changes in a woman's body. So we know we have our pelvis, which consists of our iliac crest, which are large hip bones, as well as the sacrum, which is a triangular shaped bone, which comes in the back of the body. When we um, start becoming larger in our pregnancy or the baby is getting bigger, there's a tend to pull uh, or a weight that pulls forward and brings us into an anterior pelvic tilt. That really can put a lot of stress or pressure on our sacrum and which then can sort of go up or down the chain on the bones above or below. All right, so I just wanted to go over a few assessment techniques that we typically do anytime we're meeting somebody new with um, so who's having any back pain or pelvic pain. So the first thing that we try to look at is the height of her iliac crest or the height of the hips. So I'm gonna have you do Nora, just sort of face the back wall. And I'm gonna come in here, we're gonna start with your feet together. This is just something us PTs do to try to assess and make sure that there's not one um, level of the hip higher than the other. So we're just gonna come down right on top of the hip bones here and palpate or feel for your little notches here, your PSIS to see if they're level. And in you they are. Commonly we'll see sometimes one is higher than the other, like I mentioned, or lower than the, or than the other. And I'll have you face down to the gym space. And then here what we look at is that same landmark on the body, the PSIS. We try to see if it's in line with the ASIS. A lot of times this is where we're gonna see that anterior pelvic tilt, um, which we do see a little bit here which is common with pregnancy. Okay, so guys, a common movement pattern um, that we like to practice in PregnaFit is our hinge pattern. So the hinge pattern is gonna be what utilizes all the muscles kind of on your backside, your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower back. We wanna be able to do that well because if we can't do that well, then anything that bends us forward is gonna be really challenging. So I'm gonna start Erin with a wall hinge. So I'm gonna have her set up about a foot's length away from the wall. So if you start at the wall, and then kind of put one foot in front of the other, and then bring your feet about hip width. That's perfect, okay. So this is a good starting point for most people. Most people can reach the wall from here. Now what I'm gonna have her do is, I'm gonna have her reach her hips back. So this is a very, it's a hip dominant movement. A lot of times we see the hinge becoming more quad dominant with the knees moving forward. We really wanna start with hips moving first. And we wanna think about lengthening the back muscles as well. So we kinda of get more bang for our buck in this movement. So as you reach your hips back, you're gonna reach your arms overhead. And what you're trying to do is reach your tailbone to the wall. So you do get some, some knee bend, but it's mostly hip dominant. So that's nice and easy for you to reach that wall just like that. You can take a little half step forward and then try again. So reaching back, yep, little tap in the wall, yep. You're always gonna have the wall to catch you, right? And try to keep your toes down and in contact with the floor. Really important for that core connection, yep. And then stand up nice and tall and squeeze your butt at the top. Awesome. So this is kind of our basic unloaded hip pattern. 
Um, we would typically start with a bridge, laying on the back with hips up and down. That's not a terribly comfortable position, especially for this point in pregnancy. So this is a great um, option for those of you who want to start on weighted.